Here we have a SIG P229 in 40 Smith & Wesson. Now this was created after the P226 in the early 90s and made specifically for 40 Smith & Wesson. Hey there friends, thanks for checking in. The question of the day, is the 40 Smith & Wesson on its way to becoming extinct? Or at least along the same path of the 45 GAP or the 357 SIG. You know, that's a great round. You, you, you don't hear of it too often. A lot of people swear by the 40 Smith & Wesson, the 357 SIG. Many people say, you know what? Great gun, but contact me when it's available in 40. And we used to see new releases that would come out in 9mm and 40, same frame size, different magazine size. Okay, so you do sacrifice a couple rounds compared to 9mm. But it was always seen as the perfect balance right in between a 9mm and a 45 ACP. And the cost was always fair. People would say, and I experienced myself, that even during ammo shortages, that the 40 Smith & Wesson was still available because fewer people are shooting it. During normal times, you would see a box of target loads 180 grain, full metal jacket, go for around $18, $19. That was very fair when 45 was going for $22, $23, and 9mm was around $11, $12, or $13. It was right in between those two calibers. And people said, give me a 40, because I don't want the little 9mm, I don't want the big 45, I will sacrifice the two rounds in a compact size gun and go with the 40 Smith & Wesson. But yet, you see, companies, these manufacturers producing handguns, and they're not really pushing the 40 at all. Actually, you're seeing companies like CZ not making pistols in 40, chamber in 40, these days at all. Like, they, they just stopped making them. And you're not seeing the new releases in 9mm and 40. You're seeing them in 9mm and 9mm only. Like, 9mm has become the round of the decade. And yet, 40 offers so much. Is it a snappy round? That seems to be the, the criticism. Well, I like you, but it's too snappy. I just don't see it. I'm, I'm not there. I have shot many 40 Smith & Wesson handguns, and I, I see the recoil being very manageable. You know, it's it, 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 easy to stay on target, and with anything else, it requires practice. But the new, uh, the new companies are releasing... 40s as much when you see a 40 smith and wesson handgun available primarily it's a police turn-in you look at some of these departments they have gone from 40 to 9 millimeter they they want the additional rounds okay so for a full-size gun you're sacrificing three or four rounds compared to 9 millimeter in a compact size two rounds compared to 9 millimeter why is law enforcement doing that is the 9 millimeter so great now that it you know, is is at the level 40 is, you know, the weight of the bullets have risen throughout the years. You're looking at 147 grain, nine millimeter. That's that's a good size round and it is inching its way up to the same grainage as the 165 self-defense grain in 40. So you're seeing a lot of police turn-ins available at a lower cost, you know, the Glock 23, those are available right around 400 bucks. The, the Glock 22, full size, N40. Those are going for right around the same price, maybe the upper 300. So is the 40 becoming extinct? Or on the way to, say, a 32 ACP, where it has a certain amount of people out there who enjoy the 40, but the vast majority don't. Why isn't Company, why aren't com companies like CZ producing handguns in 40? Is it because they're not selling? I believe it is not selling as much. Actually, I know that. And I've talked to ammo manufacturers. I remember a while back, I talked to Magtech. It had to be six, seven years ago. They say, we're just not producing as much 40 because people aren't buying it. But it's a ballistically proven round. It, it, I think it's a great round. Why aren't people buying it? And then if you're one of those people that say, you know what, I love the 40. I will wait until that handgun is available in 40 before I purchase some chintzy little 9mm. And I get that mindset. 45, still very popular. 45 gap, not so much.
and 357 SIG, you hardly see them. Now, one of the advantages of getting a 40 in the past was that you could purchase a conversion barrel and you know, drop it in there, go from 40 to 357 SIG. That ammo is very expensive and hard to come by. Or you could convert it to a 9mm and have the option of shooting both. You hardly hear about that anymore. I think because people aren't buying the 40s to begin with. So where do you stand on the issue? I believe it's a viable round. I think it's a great round. I think it's easily controlled. And I really don't currently have many firearms in 40. Actually, I am in the market now to get a handgun chamber in 40 Smith & Wesson. That's what I want. And I want, one of the reasons is because I have a ton of ammo. <laughs> I, I really do think the 40 holds its place in the gun world, but it could be coming a bit extinct. And I'm wondering what you think about it. So go ahead and let me know. Let's get the conversation started. Let me know if you're one of those guys that say, you know what, cool handgun, but I'm waiting for it to be chambered in 40 because that is my love affair round. If you like videos like this, please subscribe. And sure, I always appreciate the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and you guys be safe.